Hi, I'm Mike Ozzie, and here at Warner, I'm a commercial litigator and also co-chair of our intellectual property litigation subgroup. Today, I'm here to talk to you about patent infringement actions, which typically occur in federal court. We represent both patent owners and alleged infringers in those actions. Most commonly, these disputes take place in federal court. However, today, I wanna to talk to you about a different forum that's become increasingly prevalent in patent litigation in recent years, the International Trade Commission. So what is the ITC? The ITC is a part of the executive branch created by statute to deal with unfair trade practices against domestic industry. To take advantage of ITC proceedings, one must show they have a domestic industry to protect. That's typically done through a variety of factors, including employees based in the United States, research and development efforts occurring in the United States, licensing programs in the US, and other factors. Those are just to name a few. If domestic industry has been established and a violation of a patent has been established, in other words, somebody has infringed your patent and the ITC agrees, the ITC can enter what is called an exclusion order, which enables you to stop all infringing products at the border through US Customs. Additionally, an ITC judge can enter what's called a cease and desist order, which allows you to cease the production and sale of products that have come in from overseas in the US that are already here when the time the order is issued. So what is the ITC? And why is it important as compared to federal court? Well, there's a few advantages. First, as I mentioned, the unique relief you can get. It effectively allows a patent owner to nip a problem at the border before an infringing product enters the US market. Second, the unique jurisdiction of ITC actions. Oftentimes in federal court, you're required to file a case against a company for that product. And if there's another product that infringes your patent, you have to do a separate case. It can become time consuming and expensive for a patent owner. In the ITC, a single case can be instituted against a whole host of infringers. This allows you to deal with all of these issues in a single venue. Um, and it allows, frankly, any product that infringes those patents that's imported in the United States to be addressed, potentially in one fell swoop, a huge advantage for a patent owner. Whether a patent owner or an accused infringer, there's several things that one should keep in mind when in the ITC. First, as noted, things move quickly. As a result, one needs to be prepared regardless of what side of the case you're on. In federal district court, oftentimes things are very sequential with one task following another. In an ITC, many things are moving on parallel tracks. It's important to move quickly and efficiently as counsel from written discovery to depositions, expert preparation, and ultimately through trial. Additionally, given the ITC's unique jurisdiction, the relief available to patent owners is in some regards limited. Only injunctive relief, those exclusion orders and those cease and desist orders we talked about previously are available to a patent owner. Money damages are not. Only those orders are available. If one wants as a practical matter money damages, typically that case is then taken at the conclusion of the ITC action to federal court where money damages may be assessed or a case settled depending on the findings of the ITC. In conclusion, ITC actions are an important consideration for any patent owner or potential infringer as they consider enforcement issues for their organization. And whether it's an ITC action, federal court litigation, or proceedings before the Patent Office, here at Warner, we're ready to help. We look forward to hearing from you, either myself or any member of our IP litigation subgroup.